what I thought might be really useful is to give you a quick rundown on how you can capture uh, screen capture your course or course information for students that you were going to record, edit, and then put back up as a video for people to actually use. So I thought I'd give you a quick rundown on the technology I use and what the software is, because it is really, really simple to use, really easy to use, and it's what I'm using right now to record this. So what I've done is I use a product called ScreenFlow. ScreenFlow runs in the background. I hit record, or well, first of all, I set it up so that the microphone is connected that I'd like to use. In this case, I'm using a Rode NT USB mic, which is a great, simple, easy microphone. I then set screen capture and also capturing the sounds of the computer as well, so that you can sort of get a mixture of, of audio, both at the same time of the computer and of me talking, which I can mix later. And then uh, while it's recording and screen capturing, I can then talk about things. I can move the mouse around and show you. In this case, this is the empirebetween.com website. Check out the music. Awesome music. If you want to have a bit of a listen to it, I can actually play it from here. And you can have a little bit of a listen. This is a song called Wanderlust, which sounds like this. I've been standing on this hotel bound. One of my daughter singing there with a song called Wanderlust. So check out, check out the band. But as you can see, as I move the mouse around, I can you know, click on links and record or play videos that are recorded for me to play back as well which is another one called grain then I can click through and I can show you where I'm clicking as well so if I click on say one of these links over here um, let's choose let's choose one of these links at the top and we go to the YouTube channel if I click on that link obviously it goes off to the YouTube channel but notice the mouse when I clicked what I actually did, you'll see it comes up with a little target and appears there. I can also choose the size of the mouse. So that makes it easier for people to see that when I'm recording the video in editing, when I go to edit. So check out the Empire Between YouTube channel, which is just there as well. And I'm going to leave it there in the recording part. And I'm going to hit stop recording and I'll show you what it looks like when I go to edit. So if I stop record, which is up in the top right here, you're now looking at the edit screen of ScreenFlow just as the default edit screen without me changing anything yet. What you'll notice is I've got the Rode NT USB, which is the microphone I used to record with. There's the audio in one track, and then I have the video sitting below that. And if you look along there carefully, you can actually see, if I just zoom that back out a bit, you can see the audio from when I played part of that music for you to listen to. And that's the audio level just there. First thing that I do to make sure everything's working or it's going to sound correct is click on the audio, go over to the audio button and choose smooth volume levels and what that does it brings up all the audio level to a sensible level so it's nice and clean and clear and more balanced there's another little issue that I always fix first off and that is that the size of this video is based on the size of my computer screen so what I want to do is go file document settings and switch this to 1080 and select update and you can see now that the screen area has changed I just need to resize all of the captured video to fit inside that 1080 so it doesn't quite fit equal evenly you'll notice that I've chopped off that little bit at the bottom and typically I end up chopping off the menu along the top there which in this case is okay because nobody needs to see that menu and you can see there it's resized that's the first thing the next one is to click on the video section go across to the fourth icon across which is screen recording and I'm going to click on pointer zoom change that to 200% and choose radar. What that means is now when, whenever the mouse is clicked on the screen, and I, I should show you the size of the mouse first, but you can see the mouse just here. There's the mouse that I recorded. If I resize that, I can make that up to 500% bigger. And that makes it more obvious for people to see that, oh, that's where the mouse is on the screen rather than having a tiny little uh, default mouse, which is really tiny. I can make that quite a bit bigger. So I'll take, I usually take it up to about 200%. Now the radar part, if I just scroll forward, and you can see it just here. So there's the radar. When I click, it shows that I've actually clicked in that area so people know, oh, that's where you clicked. Because otherwise they won't know that that's an actual click. So that's how we get that sort of click effect to show where you're clicking, which when you're teaching people uh, screen capturing to teach someone something, you want to make sure that that click is really obvious so they know, oh yes, they did actually click. 
click on the button and when they clicked and where they clicked, especially if you're doing training materials. This little bit here, you may notice if I play the audio, okay. a little bit of a listen. This is a song called One Last, which sounds like this. That was quite loud, so I'm just going to turn that audio down by choosing uh, this track and going to volume, turn the volume down a bit, and you'll see that it changed the waveform there. Let's see if I just zoom in a bit more. You can see that it changes the height of the waveform, which is how loud it is. I'm just going to drop that back to something a bit more sensible. I'll have another listen called Wanderlust, which sounds like this. I've been standing on this hotel bow. Can I my daughter singing there with uh... Now, what I can do also is when I start talking again just here, I can add an action where I drop the volume even more for this bit of audio. And it's sort of over that time length there of that bar. That's where it fades the music down to whatever level I set it at. So now you'll hear it drops. It's one of my daughters singing there with a song called Wanderlust. So check out, the, check out the band. But as you can see, as I move the mouse around, I can, and that drops that back a bit again. So that's just a quick way of being able to edit that information. If I've done things like uh, back here, which I often have to fix up, you'll hear that. should have a listen just here. You'll hear me making this sound, which I don't like. So I often edit that out. So I'll put in an insert and an out just here and delete that little bit. And that clears that, that little sound that I do, which I'll have to leave in this time so I can explain what that is. Normally I'll cut that out. And over here, the technology I use and what the software is, because it is really, really simple to use. If I have any really bad ums and ahs that I do sometimes, and ScreenFlow run or ands in there, I can actually edit those out as well. So I can set a start and an end and then command delete and that just chops that bit out. And it just makes the flow of the recording Screen a flow. lot tighter. ScreenFlow runs in the background. I hit record, or which is much easier. And there's often bits and pieces that I babble on about that are not really necessary. Now, one last thing I do want to show you, and that is that when I'm editing this, I may want to zoom things in and show you a close up of something. So for example, this video just here, if I click on the video, go to the video option and add an action, I can zoom this in to show just that video area. I don't need to show you the rest of it. It just may look much nicer to the person watching by being able to zoom in, especially if there's a menu or navigation that you want to show them. So what happens here is if I play that, or play videos that are recorded for me to play, you'll see that it well. zooms in and shows the whole video, which is another one called Grain. And then after I finish that, I can add another action, which then zooms back out to the full screen again. It's just a nice, quick, easy way of editing. Taking us back to, I'll just position that right. Uh, taking us back to our normal layout. And if I play that through now, click on links and record or play videos that are recorded for me to play back as well. So zoom in to play the video, which is another one called Grain. And then once it's finished, we can zoom back out again to show the whole navigation, which allows us to see the rest of the screen and demonstrate the rest of the product. And once we're all done, we can just select all and we can export that as a video for YouTube or a video for your online courses or whatever you need to do. One final little bit is if you do want to add in a transition for the start so that the audio and comes in nice and evenly or the video fades out or fades in, you can right click on the section in the timeline and just add a start or ending transition. If I add an ending transition here and take it right to the very end, you'll see that fades out nicely right at the end which is a pretty cool effect as well and just simple and easy to do. So it's a very basic rundown of ScreenFlow and the important parts that I tend to straight away do in ScreenFlow to make that much easier. Hopefully that's given you a bit of an idea on how to capture your or screen capture your training information that you're going to use and then a quick little rundown on just the basics of editing that as well, ready for you to send out to students. If you need any help with that, Put some comments below, make sure you like and subscribe and I will see you in the next video.